I love paying taxes. Sorry, I, I meant I hate paying taxes. But as Franklin Roosevelt said, there are two things in life that are unavoidable, death and taxes. But old Frankie boy didn't have access to YouTube, so although taxes are unavoidable, there are many ways that we can save money on taxes as a real estate investor. In this video, I'll lay out five strategies that you should be using to reduce your tax bill. Stick around until the end of the video where I'll share some hacks on how to set up your systems to help you manage your finances inside of your real estate investing business. Hey, what's up? Darren Voros here. My mission is to help you reduce your real estate investing education time from months to minutes. Subscribe not to miss what's coming. To be clear, everything I'm about to share with you is completely legal and above board. I would never suggest cheating on your taxes or falsifying information to the tax man. This will end up landing you in some hot water. Having said that, you want to be as close to that line as you can without going over it. So finding a creative accountant will help you save thousands on taxes each year. Let's dive into the five ways to save. Number five, write-offs. There's a long list of items that we can write off as real estate investors. Even if you're a salaried employee, if you own real estate in your personal name, suddenly you move to being able to write off items against your rental properties. Does that mean you can expense your Valentine's Day dinner with your wife? That depends on whether you talked about real estate or not. I kid, of course, but there is some truth to that. Meals and entertainment are a write-off if they are in relation to your rental properties or your real estate investing business. You can also write off the interest on your loan, which you cannot do in Canada on your principal residence. You can also write off your property taxes, utilities, property management fees, repairs and maintenance, tenant gifts, advertising, bank fees, rental equipment, and so on and so on. The things you cannot write off are property management, fees if you're managing your own properties and don't have a company set up to do that and any sweat equity that you put in on your properties. If you're unsure of which things you can and cannot write off, check with your accountant. Number four, depreciation. I'm going to be very honest with you. For the longest time, I didn't really understand depreciation and I'm not even exactly sure I fully understand it now. But that's the beauty of having a team of professionals around you. You don't have to understand everything. Depreciating your real estate, as I understand it, is the act of taking the building value, not including the land value, and over time, devaluing that property. Although real estate values generally increase over time, an actual building's worth would decrease over time as it ages. By depreciating your asset, you are simply deferring the taxes that you will need to pay once you dispose of this property. This is a hot topic among accountants, whether you should do this or not. But the way my accountant explains it is he'd rather have more money in his pocket now to invest in other projects rather than paying out taxes now to avoid it later on. This makes sense to me because when we do sell a property, there will be profits there and we can pay the tax out of those profits. I'd rather not do that now so that I can save on my taxes while I'm building my real estate portfolio. Whether you choose to depreciate your assets is up to you, but it is a great way to save money on your taxes as a real estate investor. Number three, putting money into a register account. This one comes with a caveat. I use my registered funds very strategically inside of my portfolio. Let me give you an example. I just sold my downtown Toronto condo that I've owned for 15 years. Yes, I bought it when I was 10. And my profit on that transaction was approximately $450,000. My accountant suggested that I put some money into my RRSPs as a way to avoid some taxes on this sale. And the more money I put into my RRSPs, the more tax savings I would have. But I'm not a huge fan of RRSPs because they're tax deferred versus tax free. I'll pay tax on that money eventually, but here's how I use my RRSPs inside of real estate. Instead of setting up a standard RRSP account and investing in mutual funds like the majority of Canadians do, I set up a self-directed RRSP account at Olympia Trust, and then I can use that money inside of real estate in an arm's length transaction. I can lend that money out as a mortgage or I can invest in a land development deal that I'm not an owner on. This is a great way to make fantastic returns inside of your registered accounts while at the same time saving on taxes when you sell a property. If you're unsure of how this works, check out this video right here which explains how to use your registered funds inside of real estate. Before we get to the top two, let me take 15 seconds to share some exciting news with you. My new and improved real estate investing masterclass is now live. This is the most comprehensive real estate investing training on the market today. Whether you are just getting started as a real estate investor or you've got an existing portfolio of properties and you're looking to take things to the next level, this masterclass will help you get to that next level. There are over 30 modules covered 
covering everything from how to use your RSPs to invest in real estate to how to set up a corporation. You'll also get access to my team of professionals, various spreadsheets and analyzers I use in my business, and the best part, you also get three months of live group coaching with me for additional support. Check it out at darrenvoros.com. Use the promo code YouTube for $200 off. The number two way to save money on taxes is by using capital gains exemptions. We can do this in a couple of different ways. Currently, if you own a home and occupy it as your principal residence, if you sell that property, it is exempt from capital gains, meaning any profits you make from the sale of this property will not be taxed. This is a huge advantage as a real estate investor. So you may want to be strategic about which property you live in when you want to dispose of that asset. The other way you can be exempt from paying capital gains is by owning properties in a corporation. Now, corporations are not exempt entirely from capital gains, but there are exemption limits that you can take advantage of inside of a corporate structure, even on a property that it's not your principal residence. This is why it's important to understand when and how you should set up a corporation to own real estate. If you're not sure, talk with a real estate specific accountant to help you with this decision. And the number one way to save money on taxes as a real estate investor is to use the cash out refinance strategy. Instead of selling a property, which will trigger capital gains tax if it's not your principal residence, the alternative is to refinance the property and put a mortgage on the property. The new higher mortgage will pay out the old lower mortgage and whatever is left over will be given to you in the form of cold hard cash. There is no tax to be paid on this money. That's right, I'll say it again, there's no tax to be paid on this money. The reason you don't pay tax on these funds is because they are in the form of debt and you don't pay taxes on debt. So instead of selling a property, do the math on refinancing it instead and take your proceeds in cash tax-free. Now, if you get a higher mortgage on a property, this will increase your loan amount, which will increase your payments. But we usually do this when our rental amounts have also gone up so that they can cover the higher mortgage amount. But if we keep refinancing and putting a higher mortgage on our properties, we will never pay them off. That is absolutely correct. Look at the most savvy investors out there. The goal is not to pay off properties. The goal is to leverage those properties to acquire more properties. This allows you to grow your portfolio and also diversifies your risk. I'd rather own 10 properties that are 75% mortgaged versus owning two that are free and clear. As promised, I wanted to share how I manage my finances in order to stay on top of taxes and accounting. I'm a big fan of using software and bookkeepers. If you don't have software that can help you with managing your finances, check out QuickBooks or something similar. If you're not using a bookkeeper, I would recommend getting one sooner than later. You may not necessarily need one right now if you only have one or two properties, but if you have aspirations of growing a portfolio, it's better to set up your systems when you have a small operation to make sure you're doing everything correctly as opposed to setting up your systems when you need them. That's usually the point where it's much more difficult and costly to do so. So get set up with some accounting software and hire a bookkeeper. This will help you manage your finances and make your life much easier. If you have any questions related to saving money on your taxes or real estate investing in general, you can leave those in the comment section below. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram where I post regularly. Check back here every Tuesday as I release a new video every week. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on Tuesday.